Over the years, I've met my fair share of foreigners in Thailand. Some are extremely nice and friendly, others not so nice. Some have been completely crazy, others have been a little bit sleazy. Some are looking to Thailand for a fresh start or are just traveling through. And some people probably should have left 10 years ago. Now, Thailand is a fascinating country, a mix of rich Buddhist culture and traditions, mostly friendly people, delicious food, crazy nightlife, diverse ethnic groups, big city vibes, stunning beaches, and an alien language, all wrapped up in the one country. And for many foreigners, in particular coming from the West, there is a lot of perceived freedom in Thailand because there are less rules and foreign money goes a long way. So it's no wonder that the country attracts such a diverse range of expats and tourists. <laughs> now today I'm probably going to come across as a complete arsehole and maybe even offend some people. So don't take it too seriously. But here are 22 types of foreigners that I have met over the years in Thailand. Both the good and the bad. Number one, the backpacker. Southeast Asia is the perfect place to be a backpacker. Cheap, fun, relatively safe, and full of energy. Mostly found at 300 baht per night hostels on Khao San Road, or at the full moon parties of Gok Pangan. The backpacker will usually be found wearing the famous elephant pants and lugging around a huge backpack. Now, I have met many good ones over the years, but usually just one night with a Thailand backpacker is enough for me. Number two, the retiree. Thailand is a very popular retirement destination due to its affordable lifestyle, warmer weather, and access to good medical care. While some retirees are the dirty old blokes you see stalking the bars of Pattaya or Phuket, many are just couples or singles just trying to enjoy their retirement in a relatively low-cost environment. Number three, the sexpat. The sexpat or sex tourists tend to be the foreigners I stay the furthest away from, usually spotted in the bars of Nana or on the beaches of Phuket or Pattaya. The sexpat or sex tourist loves reminding you that Thai girls are easy or the girls here are way better than back home. There is honestly not much worse than getting stuck in a conversation with foreigners like these and if I ever do, I usually try and run away as fast as I can. Number four, the English teacher. There are thousands of foreign English teachers in Thailand because of the high demand for English in Thailand's education system. Many have been lifelong ESL teachers and others are simply looking for a new opportunity and way to experience a completely new culture. This is actually what I did when I first lived in Thailand in 2014. Number five, the Buddhist. As a deeply Buddhist country, Thailand attracts many foreigners on a mission to connect to their Buddhist spirituality and hopefully achieve enlightenment. There are a select few who take it to the next level and join monasteries to become monks or even just do monk training for a couple of weeks. Number six, the Christian missionary. Christian missionaries exist all across Thailand. In particular, the Mormons have a very strong presence, especially in rural areas like Isan in northeastern Thailand, spreading what they claim to be the good word. Now, to what success rate, I'm not too sure. An interesting thing about the Mormons is that they take learning the local language very seriously. So, as a result, Probably 90% of the foreigners I have met in Thailand who can speak Thai fluently are actually Mormon or ex-Mormon. Number seven, the corporate worker. As a major place for international business and commerce, Bangkok attracts a lot of office workers and corporates. So um, I, I got transferred by my employer uh, from Philippines to uh, Bangkok, Thailand. I'm working with Centers for Disease Control. That's a US like public health agency. It's like WHO. So I'm a social development professional. We work on public health issues. Ah, wow. Yeah, so uh, public health issues like you know, uh, HIV, hepatitis, tuberculosis, malaria. Enjoying the comparatively lower income tax rates that Thailand has to offer, these types often live around Sukhumvit and live a fairly good lifestyle going to lots of nice bars and restaurants. Number eight, the diplomats and executives. The diplomats and executives are the foreigners that you will be least likely to meet. 
hovering around the boardrooms, private clubs, golf courses, and embassies of Bangkok, these foreigners are definitely the richest and most powerful foreigners in Thailand. I've met a handful over the years and they are usually very knowledgeable and have had a lot of life experiences. Number 9. Southeast Asian Migrant Workers Migration from neighboring countries in Southeast Asia to Thailand is absolutely massive. <laughs> For many regular tourists walking through popular destinations in Thailand, it would be fair to assume that a lot of the workers there are Thai, but in fact, many are from neighboring countries like Cambodia, Laos, and Myanmar who have come to Thailand in search of more money and a better life. Very sadly, however, these workers are often treated super poorly and exploited a lot by Thai management. And often a lot of the general population in Thailand tends to look down on them. Number 10, the lost traveler. With nothing but sandals, a backpack and a few moths in the wallet, the lost traveler can usually be found up around the mountains of Chiang Mai or Chiang Rai. When I first lived in Thailand in 2014 in a rural Karen village, I encountered a lot of these types and usually they were quite friendly but often there was an obvious sense of disconnect and isolation from their country of origin. Number 11, the Thai wannabes and Thailand know-it-alls. Now these foreigners are the types who think they know absolutely everything about Thailand. They are often militant about the Thai language and do everything they can to imitate Thai people. They also try to avoid hanging out with other foreigners or at least have some kind of superiority complex over them because foreigners just don't get it. Number 12, the Bangkok shopping tourist. Places like Icon Siam and Emporium in Phnom Penh, as well as other market areas like Jatuchak, makes Bangkok a very popular destination for shopping. The Bangkok shopping tourists tend to come from other countries in the area and will stay in Bangkok for two or three nights just for a quick shopping spree. Number 13, the negative asshole. If you go to any popular expat bars, it will not take you long to come across a negative asshole. These are the types who have lived in Thailand for 5, 10, 15, maybe even 20 years and do nothing but complain about the place. But when you ask them if they'd like to go home, they complain about their country of origin even more. So where the f*** do you want to live? Number 14, the international student. The international students are usually the sons and daughters of the diplomats and executives that we discussed in type number eight. And so do you study at an international school? International school. Cool. Okay. So you'll have an interesting perspective. How, how old are you, sorry, if you don't mind me asking? 18. 18. With many of these international students who have grown up hopping from country to country, they will often refer to themselves as third culture kids because they don't feel a sense of home in their original place of birth or to any of the countries that they've lived in. Now I've met a few of these international student foreigner types over the years and I usually find them to be very open-minded and pretty easy to get along with. Number 15, the digital nomad. The digital nomad has become a lot more popular in the last 10 years. And these types come in all shapes, sizes, and occupations, from the crypto traders, to the digital marketing gurus, to the worst ones of all, the YouTubers. Now, you can never really tell whether a lot of these digital nomads are the real deal or not, but let's just say, when I've been to the pub with a few of them over the years, it's not often them asking to shout the first round of beers. Number 16, the Muay Thai fighter. Many foreigners come from far and wide to attend Muay Thai training camps, both at a professional and amateur level. These foreigners absolutely live and breathe Muay Thai as they attend training camps and learn from the best of the best in Thailand. Some even end up in the rings at both local and professional boxing arenas. Number 17, the real Thailand tourist. Wherever you go in the world, you'll always meet people who militantly refuse to be guided by a lonely planet guide. Now, I actually get it. The idea of paying to go to overcrowded temples or spending time at packed tourist markets is also not my idea of a good time. But the thing is with these types is that they just talk a little bit too much about the real Thailand. Now these types you often find exploring the outskirts of the city or in rural areas, usually trying to strike up conversations with people who speak pretty low levels of English. And to them I say, 
good luck. But honestly, just stop using the phrase, the real Thailand. Number 18, the Russian in Phuket. Now, I probably would not have added this to the list two years ago, but due to the ongoing war in Ukraine, the amount of Russians going to places like Phuket and Bali seems to have increased massively. Number 19, the hippie. Even before the recent relaxation of cannabis laws, Thailand has always been a very attractive place for hippies. Often found in northern Thailand around places like Bai, the hippie travelers love hanging out in local weed cafes or bungalows and partaking in activities like hula hooping or fire dancing with other like-minded folks. Number 20, the yogi. Whether you are looking for a yoga retreat to reconnect with your inner self or a detox program to clear your body and mind, Thailand has you covered. The yoga retreat can usually be spotted on the islands down south in places like Koh Samui. Number 21, the village dweller. These are a very rare type of foreigner and I've only met a few of them in my life. These are usually Farang who live in a faraway village as the only foreigner in that village. They usually take up work by helping out on their partner's family farm or helping with a local business. Whilst I do enjoy speaking to these types on the rare occasions that I get to meet them, there is no doubt that they are usually very unique and eccentric individuals. And number 22, the wife seeker. Thailand is a huge marriage market with thousands of Western men coming to find Thai wives, often in places like Isan up in the northeast of Thailand, where women have less opportunity and come from comparatively poorer backgrounds. Now, can this be real love? Sometimes yes, sometimes probably not. I'll let the viewers decide. Anyway guys, that's it for the 22 types of foreigners that I've seen over the years in Thailand. If I've missed any, make sure to leave a comment down below. But until next time, I'll see you very soon.